गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू दी ऑनलाइन क्लासेस इन फिजिक्स फॉर स्टैंडर्ड ट्वेल्थ टुडे वी वुड स्टार्ट चैप्टर थर्ड ऑफ एन सी करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड इन दिस चैप्टर द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी वुड डिस्कस इज इलेक्ट्रिक करंट स्टूडेंट्स यू ऑलरेडी हैव सम बेसिक आइडिया रिगार्डिंग दिस टॉपिक्स विच यू हैव रेड इन स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ you know that we use the symbol i for electric current now what is the meaning of this electric current suppose you imagine there be some conducting wire so this is a conductor a metallic conductor and this is the wire we choose a cross section on this wire now sitting over here imagine this cross section area of cross section and through this cross section you have to observe the flow of charges suppose some charge delta q crosses this cross section normally in some time delta t so what is delta q it is the net positive charge flowing normal to the cross sectional area in time delta t so this is delta q so in time delta t charge delta q flows normally through this particular area and delta q is the net charge don't uh, miss this term net there is every possibility that both kinds of charges let that is positive and negative are present positive charges are suppose flowing in this direction negative charges are flowing in opposite direction under the influence of some electric field suppose q plus is the positive charge flowing in this direction and q minus is the negative charge that flows in opposite direction and they cross this cross section in time delta t then delta q as per our assumption it is the net positive charge flowing so delta q will be q plus minus q minus positive charges are moving towards right negative charges are moving towards left so according to this figure the net positive charge flowing towards right normally through this particular cross section will be delta q which will be q plus minus q minus if this be delta q then the average current during this time we define as i average is equal to delta q by delta t and if we reduce this time interval to be very small and we choose the limiting case limit delta t tends to 0 delta q upon delta t we get the value of current at a particular instant and that we write as instantaneous current so this is the definition for current electric current and this we can write as dq upon dt if the current is steady steady means it is not fluctuating so for steady current or in steady case we can simply write i is equal to q upon t where q is the amount of charge of flowing in time t but if the current is fluctuating we will use average uh, current for some interval or we will use instantaneous current at a particular instant what is the value of current so at that instant the current will be dq by dt where q will be a function of time then so this is the definition for electric current charge units you know students that is coulomb time unit is second so si unit for electric current will be how much coulomb per second that we also call as ampere you know these things so 1 ampere is 1 coulomb per second okay next we will discuss ohm's law <coughs> this law is also fam uh, you are acquainted with this particular law suppose we choose a conductor whose length is l and area of cross section is capital a as shown and its ends we connect it to some source of voltage we connect a battery across its ends and suppose the battery provides some potential difference that is v we have already discussed the meaning of potential difference in last chapter now this battery will send some current so this is the positive terminal that sends some current i and the negative terminal will receive some current same current that is i so the current through any cross section of this conductor is how much 
i now across the ends of the conductor the potential difference is v so what is v v is the potential difference across the ends of the conductor you should write yourself what is i i is the current flowing through the conductor then according to ohm's law from ohm's law we write v proportional to i when we state this particular proportionality relation the other factors must remain same other physical conditions like temperature uh, should not vary pressure etc should not vary so this is the statement of ohm's law that whenever the ends of a conductor are supplied with potential difference v such that current i runs through the conductor then the potential difference across its ends is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conductor provided other factors like temperature are kept constant if this be so then we write v is equal to some constant into i that constant we write as r so r is proportionality constant and this r we give it a name that is resistance and it is basically a measure of opposition to the flow of current if there is a material which has high resistance it means it will offer less current because we can see r is equal to v by i so for a given voltage i will be less in that material which has high value of r and i will be more in that conductor in which r is less so this is the statement of ohms law now let us discuss some factors that would affect the value of resistance of a given <coughs> metallic conductor the same figure so here we have written v is equal to i times r where r is the resistance of this particular conductor two factors we shall discuss length and area of cross section suppose this we divide into half two halves okay so we divide this conductor into two halves as i have indicated here one is lower half one is upper half so area of cross section of each half will become how much a by 2 but length of both the parts will remain how much l so the length remains same area of cross section is reduced by half reduced to half its initial value now the current through both of them earlier the current was i so out of the total current i half of it will flow through the upper part so the current will become i by 2 and the remaining half will flow through the lower part that is i by 2 such that the total current will become how much i but the potential difference across the ends of upper half and lower half they are in parallel you have some idea regarding series and parallel from your standard 10th basics so both these halves are connected to the same source between the same point so the potential difference v remains same so if you consider one half for one half the area of cross section is a by 2 the length is l the potential difference is same that is v and the current is how much i by 2 let's its resistance be r dash now from ohms law what do we write the potential difference the potential difference is how much v how much is the current through that one half through one half the current is i by 2 times its resistance is suppose r dash so r dash becomes how much 2v by i 2v by i and earlier earlier according to ohms law when we have not divided into two halves the total relation was this total potential difference v is total current i time the resistance of the entire block that was how much r so earlier r was how much v by i now r dash is how much twice of v by i that means i can write twice of r 
so what we observe that if area of cross section was reduced from a to a by 2 earlier the complete area of cross section this one this one was how much a and a by 2 is the area of cross section of the upper half this much this much is a by 2 the if area of cross section is reduced to half then the uh, resistance becomes doubled that means there is inverse relation and therefore we write r proportional to 1 by a so resistance of a thicker conductor will be less and for thin conductors the resistance will be more let's now see the effect of length so this is our original case v is equal to ir r is the resistance of this entire conductor whose length is how much l now suppose we reduce this length to half so this becomes l by 2 but the area of cross section remains same the area of cross section will remain a now see this total potential difference v is this potential difference plus this potential difference and symmetry says both this potential difference must remain same so between these two points the potential difference should be v by 2 so these two parts you can think they are in series so this is v this will be v by 2 this will be v by 2 and their sum is equal to v and since they are in series the total current must remain same if it is i here also the current will be i and in the second half also the current will be i so for one half if you apply ohm's law here the potential difference on one half is not v it is v by 2 so we will write v by 2 is equal to i current what is the current i and what is its resistance we don't know suppose we write it as r dash now what does r dash become so r dash becomes v upon 2i now r was how much v upon i so we can write r dash is equal to v by 2i is nothing but r upon 2 so what we observed that if length becomes l by 2 resistance also becomes r by 2 so there is direct relation between the resistance and the length for a conductor metallic conductor so we write r proportional to l is it clear students so we discussed two factors area of cross section and length so those two i have summarized over here now if we combine these two relations we will get r proportional to l upon a and this implies we will get r is equal to some constant times l by a that constant we denote by rho and you must be remembering this this also you have read in standard 10th rho we call it as resistivity okay and its si unit you can check it out from here it will be ohm to meter resistance si unit is ohm area of cross section meter square length meter so resistivity si unit is ohm meters it's important to note that resistivity does not depend upon it is independent of physical dimensions of the conductor it does not depend upon length area of cross section shape or size of the conductor it is inherent property of the uh, conductor we say so rho is independent of the physical dimensions so what are the factors affecting resistance resistance depends upon length area of cross section it depends upon temperature it depends upon nature of material resistivity on the other hand it will not depend upon length it does not depend upon area it depends upon of course temperature and nature of material we shall discuss this dependence later on in some more details how do we define resistivity actually from this relation one we can see that if your length of the conductor becomes one meter and area of cross section of the conductor becomes one meter square then r is equal to rho numerically because if you put l is equal to one a is equal to one then this becomes one and we will be left with r is equal to rho so this gives the definition from this you can write the definition yourself that resistivity of a conductor of a material may be defined as 
the resistance offered by the material of that conductor of length 1 meter and area of cross section 1 meter square is that clear students so i please write that definition yourself so this is about some basic revision regarding ohm's law resistivity and resistance before we proceed further <coughs> it's important to know one term current density see as i have indicated here first of all you should note that it is a vector quantity whose magnitude is equal to i by a and whose direction so direction of j vector is along the direction of current so j vector magnitude is i by a so how do we define it we can define it as current per unit area and that area we take it normal to the direction of current for example this particular area of cross section through this the current will flow normally like this so if this is the area then the current should be normal to the area that current per unit area if you divide this current by this area we will get the value of current density okay so definition you can write it is the current per unit area uh, you can find in textbooks it is current per unit area that area you have to mention it is taken normal to the current current should be normal to the area okay as the definition suggests current has si unit ampere area of cross section has si unit meter square so its si unit should be how much students ampere per meter square one more thing i would like to specify here whenever you connect a conductor to a battery source now here i have indicated plus and minus what does this plus and minus indicate it indicates that this end is at higher potential because it is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and this is at lower potential because it is connected to the negative terminal of the battery if you remember students wherever there is potential difference see here potential is high here potential is low there is electric field so inside this conductor there is some electric field now it might look a bit contradictory to you because if you remember i have discussed electric field is equal to zero inside a conductor that we have discussed in last chapter okay now this might look contradictory but let me come uh, tell the sentence completely e is equal to zero inside conductor whenever we have discussed there we have mentioned one condition in static situation A static situation means that situation when there is no current when there is no flow of charge the charges at rest are at rest that means when current was zero here it is not a static situation here we have connected the ends of the conductor to a battery or a cell which drives some current into the conductor in this case inside this there is flow of charge and that flow of charge is because of the electric field developed within the conductor because of the presence of this battery am i clear students so here e is not equal to zero inside the conductor there is some e and it is not a static situation if e is zero inside a conductor that must be under a static condition is it clear so this is not a static condition so i am rubbing this part here there is some electric field and what is the direction of electric field that is from higher potential to lower potential so as i have indicated here if you see carefully the electric field e vector is along current and current density also i have told the direction of current density is also along the direction of current so i can say that e vector and j vector both of them are along same direction your current density is always in the same direction as the electric field okay students this is one important thing that we should observe in this particular situation 
नेक्स्ट ओहम्स लॉ व्हाट वी नो दैट इज वी इज इक्वल टू आई आर इट कैन बी रिटर्न इन ए मॉडिफाइड फर्सन एंड दैट वी राइट एज द वेक्टर फॉर्म सी द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस इज करंट टाइम्स रेजिस्टेंस एंड आर वी हैव रिटर्न एज यू नो रो टाइम्स एल अपॉन ए दिस ए एल कंबाइन विथ आई सो इट बिकम्स आई अपॉन ए I can write like so. I upon A is the magnitude of current density. So I upon A I'll write as J vector magnitude. That is J. Now potential difference and electric field. How are they related? You know, electric potential difference between these two points will be electric field times this distance. That is length of the conductor L. If you remember, V is equal to minus integration e dot dr uh, let me elaborate it more so potential difference between these two points is v so delta v is equal to v and that is minus integration e dot dr from one point to the other point so we are the, this delta v is v plus minus v minus so we have to go from this point to this point from the negative potential to the positive potential so e dot dr if you solve it out this minus and that cos 180 that will become plus it will become e times d e is uniform we will assume we will take it out integration dr is nothing but this distance that distance is d oh, sorry l so we we'll write e times l is it clear students okay so v is equal to e times l so i'll put that value over here so we'll get e times l for v is equal to j times rho times l so l will cancel and this gives us the value for j as j is equal to 1 by rho times e now observe this equation carefully this is the scalar relation there are no vectors but just now we discussed that the current density j and the electric field e their vectors point in the same direction so this equation we can write in vector form simply by putting the vectors over j and e because they have same direction if they were in opposite direction we could have put minus sign but that is not the case this number 1 by rho is also denoted by sigma and is called as conductivity it is defined as the reciprocal of resistivity so sigma is nothing but 1 upon rho in terms of sigma if you wish i can write j vector is equal to sigma times e vector commit to memory this particular relation this is the vector form of ohms law so if you are asked by somebody that state the ohms law in vector form it is this equation which you have to cite j vector is equal to sigma times e vector the scalar form and the vector form they are uh, synonyms in one sense they reflect the same idea they reflect the same principle only the way of presentation is different but i think this is a better version because it also specifies that there is some electric field inside the conductor in that situation and there is some current density and current density and electric field are in same direction some hidden informations are present in this particular relation so what is this relation this is the vector form of ohms law this one is the scalar form of ohms law so students what should be the uh, unit for sigma as i have discussed sigma is a reciprocal of resistivity and the resistivity has the unit uh, ohm meters si unit ohm meter so sigma should have the si unit as per ohm per meter there are different representations in terms of siemens also you can find it out in your textbooks so i'm leaving it up to you uh, okay students i'll stop here please practice these uh, discussions uh, uh, understand these discussions whatever i have discussed today in the next class we will proceed further uh, with the concept of drifting of electrons inside a conductor and then after that we will start series and parallel combination of resistors so till then goodbye take care read well